Hey guys, it's Mr. Post, and on today's video, we'll be checking out what ions are. I want you to, number two, be able to calculate the charges on atoms. And number three, I want you to be able to express the atomic number, the mass number, and the charge when we're talking about the complete chemical symbol. In discussing charges, we first have to discuss electrons, all right? Electrons are going to give us this charge. It's really an electron-proton relationship. Now, electrons, what I want you to know about them is that they're mobile, and they can come and go from the electron cloud. And when they do come and go, they either, when they depart, give a positive charge to the atom, or when they, when they join an electron cloud, they give a negative charge. All right, one thing I want you to know, though, is that the protons do not leave the atom. So this is a lesson on how to calculate charges. In future lessons, we'll be talking more about the coming and going of electrons, but that's where the charge is coming from. In a neutral atom, we're going to have the same number of protons and electrons. That's right, if I have six protons and six electrons, I have a neutral atom. If I have six protons, what do they do? They cancel out the six electrons. Meaning this, let's just picture one, two, three protons that are positive charges, and one, two, three electrons that are negative charges. That's right, that represents three protons, and this represents three negative electrons. Guess what, dudes? These guys, they cancel each other out. There's no charge between them. This, this proton, this electron, they cancel each other out. There's no charge between them. This proton, this electron, they cancel each other out. There is no charge. So what I'm trying to drive home, if you haven't gotten the point yet, they're going to cancel each other out when it's neutral. You have to have the same number of protons and electrons. Now, as those electrons come and go, we end up having charges on these atoms. And these atoms have a name for them when they have a charge. It's called an ion. So an ion is any atom that has a charge. We just say it's a charged particle. You can have positive charges or negative charges. Specifically, a cation is a positive ion. That's right. How do you remember this? A cation is A plus sign, a positive Ion. Not too bad, huh? And this is a case, an example, where I have three protons and two electrons. So what's happening here? Let's just draw three pluses, and let's just draw my two electrons. So three protons, two electrons. Here we go, dudes. Guess what? These cancel each other out. These cancel each other out. And I have one leftover, uncanceled that proton. That's going to give me a one-plus charge. That's right. You see this because cations will lose their electrons. Cations will give away their electrons, and when they give away their electrons, they have a positive charge. So I can't stress that enough. Traditionally, if you have three protons, you're probably going to have three electrons too. But then we're going to have a little change. One of my electrons is going to leave. All right, so I lost and left. I lost an electron, and now I have two. You see the unbalance now. Three protons are canceled out by two electrons. You have one proton that is not canceled out, remaining with a one plus charge. So cations are positive, and they lose their electrons. Let's go to the other way. An anion is a negative ion. How do I know that? I tell you what. If this is a negative ion, what's my little mnemonic device? Because an anion is a negative. That is for negative ion. An anion is a negative ion. And a good example of a negative ion is where I have two protons. Let's draw them as two pluses. That's those, these guys. I have three electrons. Let's draw my three negative electrons. Guess what's going to happen? Let's cancel them out. These guys cancel. These guys cancel. And I'm left with a negative charge left over. That's right, guys. I got a one minus charge. How did this all come about? Bam. Anions gain electrons. When you gain electrons... You now outnumber the protons. When you outnumber the protons, you end up with a negative ion or negative electron left over that's not canceled out, and you have a negative charge. All right, dudes, here we go. We got a little bit of a math practice here. As we're going to be approaching this uh, atomic charges lesson, we're going into the atomic charges part here, guys. I want you to have your math skills sharp and ready for this lesson. So what we're going to do is first do a couple basic problems without mentioning the words protons or electrons. Maybe a good idea for you would be to like press pause and try to solve these on your own. All right, they're really simple. I just want to make sure you got this framework down before we proceed to the next part. Otherwise, here I go. So we're looking at a five plus a negative five. They cancel out. My charge is zero. 
I have a negative 2, which is 2 minuses and 2 pluses. You're going to notice it's exactly the same like before. They cancel each other out. Now, in this case, a negative 3 plus a 2, well, that's going to give me a negative 1. I could also say that the positive 2 cancels out two of these guys, and I have one guy left over. Regardless of how you look at it, the answer is negative 1. And likewise, I have three pluses. That's like a 1, 2, a 3 plus, and I have a 1, 1 negative. There we go. Guess what? That cancels that guy out. I still have two pluses left, or two. Now, let's use the word protons and electrons. All right, dudes, here we go. Here's a couple of problems. What I want you to do, once again, press pause, work through the problems, try to figure out the charge. This is really all it comes down to. It's a, a kind of a difference between protons and electrons. What is your numeric difference between them? Give it a shot. I'll come back and solve it in a second. Seconds up, guys. All right, let's look at this. I have three positives and two negatives. That's right, the answer is 1 plus. It really doesn't matter if you draw the plus on this side or this side. Some teachers might get a little freaked out about it. Not to worry, dudes. Either way, you got a 1 positive. That's all I really need to know. Look at this over here, guys. We've got 15 pluses and we've got 18 negatives. Which side do you have more of? i got more negatives. How many more? I have three more negatives than positives. That's right, it's a 3 minus charge. Over here, i got 91 pluses and 90 negatives. Where am I getting that from? That's a negative sign there, and that's a plus sign. So I have 91 protons, 90 electrons. Overall, I have a 1 plus charge. Look at this one here. 32 protons, 34 electrons. I have two more what? Two more negative dudes. That makes it a 2 minus charge. And we got a 9 positive and a 10 negative. That's right, guys. I got more on the negative side. Look at this. I'm drawing a negative one this time. So I'm drawing the negative on this side. That's the simplicity of finding out the charge. Now we're going to raise it up a little bit. I want you to express the information about the charge using a complete chemical symbol. Just a little review here. My complete chemical symbol. My mass number is in the top. That is the protons plus the neutrons. My atomic number is that number right there. And that's going to be my number of protons. Here we go. This is where we put the charge. It's not where we put the electrons. It's where we put the charge meaning plus 1, plus 2, plus 3, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. So the same format as we've been using with our chemical symbol here, but now we're going to add on this thing here of the charge. Let's get into it. Write the chemical symbol for my atom that has 7 protons, 8 neutrons, and 10 electrons. All right, dudes, I want the format of the previous screen. I want a number on the top, a number on the bottom, an element, and a charge. This is what I want for this slide right here. Go to it, solve it. I'm going to come back with the answer in like two seconds. All right, dudes, it's answer time. Let's start out. I have seven protons. Find the element on your periodic table that has seven protons. You're going to find that element is nitrogen. And I'm going to write the 7 down there because that's my atomic number and that's the number of protons. The mass number is the top number right over here. And that is a combination of protons and neutrons. And 7 plus 8 is going to give me 15 as my mass number. So far, so good. Now let's get to the new stuff. My charge goes over in this area right here. Let's get this right. I have 7 positives and 10 negatives. That's right, 7 pluses because they're protons, 10 negative electrons. Which side do I have more of? Clearly I have more electrons. How many more do I have than protons? Three. And so three of these aren't canceled out and my whole entire chemical symbol is 15 over 7 nitrogen 3 minus. What this is is a fantastic way for scientists to express all kinds of information about the atom. I'm expressing my mass number up here in atomic mass units, number of particles. I got the protons down here. I got the symbol from the periodic table. And by me saying the three minus charge, that means my electron cloud has gained three electrons to go from seven now to ten. Awesomeness. All right, dudes, here we go. Give me the chemical symbol again. You know what I'm looking for now. Let's bust it out. 16 protons, 33 neutrons, 18 electrons, Take it away. I'll come and clean it up on the other side. All right, guys. Let's bust the move here. Let's start off. I have 16 protons. That's where I begin. 16 protons are right down here. That tells me on the periodic table that I'm dealing with the element sulfur. We use a capital S to you know, indicate that. 
I want to now take care of my mass number. Mass number is going to go on top here, the number of particles in my nucleus or the mass and atomic mass units. Well, that's protons plus neutrons. So it's really a 16 plus a 33. So I'm looking at, in this case, 49 particles in the nucleus. 16 of them are protons. All right, last thing. Let's go for the charge. That's our new thing today. The charge is over here. The charge, I look at the protons. The charge, I'm going to look at the electrons. Which side do I have more of? Well, I'm going to have more of my negative electron. How many more? 16 here, 18 here. I have two more electrons, and they carry a negative charge, and so I'm going to have a two minus charge. Maybe you want to think, my protons, i got 16 of them. They'll cancel out a lot of these electrons. How many will they cancel out? 16. So I'm going to have two negative electrons left over that have not been canceled out, and maybe that's what helps you understand what the charge is. All right, dudes, here we go. A little more practice for you. In this case, give me the same thing. I want the chemical symbol for something that has 12 protons, 13 neutrons, 10 electrons. All right, work it out. I'll come back and clean up the answer in two seconds. All right, dudes, let's rock and roll here. I got 12, uh, I got 12 protons. Let's write that down here. That's where it starts. Look on your periodic table for something that has the atomic number of 12, and you're going to find this element. Magnesium, magnificent magnesium. Right there it is. My mass number is going to be a combination of protons and neutrons, and let's add them up. 12 plus 23, that's going to give me 25 as my mass number. Lastly, let's get the charge. You know where it goes. You know what we're going to compare. I'll write it over here. I got 12 protons I'm comparing, and I'm going to compare it to my 10 electrons. You're going to see some cancellation take place here. I'm going to cancel out 10 electrons with 10 protons. And you're going to notice I have two protons left over. That's right. Magnesium will sport a 2 plus charge. All right. Uh, if you're getting this, guys, you are hashtag awesome. All right. Keep it up. Now, I'm throwing a little curveball here. I hope you see it. I've listed, like, everything horizontally this time. That's right. And I've expressed it a little differently, too expressed a little differently too. I want you to think about this. Write the chemical symbol for something that has one proton, two neutrons, and zero electrons. Go to it, guys. Let's wrap it up here. I have one proton. One proton is the element number one, and that's hydrogen. One plus my two neutrons tells me that there's three particles in the nucleus, three atomic mass units, is its weight. Let's look at this last of the charge. I got one proton, and yes, this happens. I have zero electrons. What is my charge? Well, obviously, it's going to be a one positive. Dudes, I hope you rocked this video. I hope it was helpful. You know, go back, play it again. Try the problems on your own. You know, I'm sure you're probably pretty awesome, right? Thanks a lot for tuning in. I'll catch you again. Later.